<laughs> well, now we're back. All right. Welcome to the Dr. G Show. I'm uh, Dr. G, and uh, usually it's Dr. G and the boss, but we, uh, she's missing. Where's Holly? Where are you, Holly? Or H2O. So last week, you guys, uh, we talked about um, thyroid, and it was a rerun episode, if you didn't notice. Um, so that was pretty good. If you guys have questions about that, let me know. Uh, this week, we're going to talk about uh, Becoming the Better You. This is episode 121. And uh, we have a special guest today. Uh, we're going to talk about integrating your divine feminine and divine masculine self, not male or female, um, for the better balance of authenticity, which I stole from Tara uh, Scott. Uh, but she doesn't watch the show, so she don't know. <laughs> um, but she's amazing. She is amazing. Yeah, that's why we stole this from her. So, uh, our special guest is Melanie 2.0. <laughs> no, Holly 2.0. Or Malushka. Malushka. Which I like. I like Malushka. Or even better, Melanie. Or Melanie like Samo. I answer to all the above. <laughs> all the above? All right. So... Um, Today, I mean, this this talk we're doing today is pretty interesting. There's Jim. Hi, Jim. Which uh, we're going to, or I'm going to his wedding Friday. That's exciting. He's getting married. Talk about divine self. He teaches a really great course um, about, um, you have to remind me, but it's all about uh, intellectual IQ. No, no, no. Emotional IQ. Emotional IQ. Yeah. So uh, he's a great professor, awesome guy, uh, and he found love. Congrats. So he went through his own hero's journey too. So he has an amazing story of triumph also, just like a lot of you guys out there. Um, hey, Roy. Um, glad you guys are joining. Um, today, you know, um, with with Melanie, the reason we have her on, uh, she's been guest a few times, which is nice. Even when we talked about sex, um, <gasps> which, yeah, yeah. Didn't get a lot of inappropriate comments on that, which is pretty good. Uh, I'm or questions. very shocked. <laughs> so, um, you know, she's going to be one of the speakers at the first Wise Women uh, ICT event for 2019, which is pretty awesome. Hey, there's Sherilyn. Now they're both watching. And um, uh, so she'll be one of the key speakers, which will be great. I'm actually speaking to, and then we have uh, Christina Walker, uh, which you guys might know too. She's going to be one of the speakers in that uh, uh, lineup also. We have Christina Duncan doing um, the yoga. We have Tara Sol doing the meditation, or Tara Scott doing the meditation. And so it's a wonderful event, January 19th. And a little bit about it, do you know, uh, do you wanna go over the points about it? I mean, I wanna chime in here and there. Okay, so if you guys don't know, the Wise Women event, uh, Wise Women ICT, uh, it's not just for wise women, like any right. women can go. And in fact, if you're not wise, you should go because we get wisdom. And then guys should go so that they can support their wise women because strong men like strong women. That's true. Yeah. And mm. also, it's health is for everybody. Are you sure about that? Yes. That doesn't Integrated sound health right. is for everyone. It, mm. So you would say that women tend to lead in the health department? 85% of all healthcare visits are women. And they're proactive and they do what they're supposed to. Men rarely do anything. So that's a dynamic that we should change. <laughs> that's right. So at minimum, men should just not sabotage. At the, minimum. At you minimum. shouldn't sh sabotage at other people's best, health. We have really good patients sometimes. Their husbands are like just dead on with them. Like, whatever you do, baby, I'll support you and I'll help lead the way. Like, they hold hands and they just go forward together. Like, I love that. That's what we want. Yeah. So, uh, as you guys know, the Wise Women thing, it's, it's a four-part series in 2019. And we have the healthier, happier, stronger, and secure together. And um, we're joining together with local community leaders. That's us. That's us. That's us. And uh, creating transformative lectures, uh, workshops, dynamic presentations that are supportive, nurturing, uh, and empowering. And the purpose is to get uh, of wise women is really to connect like uh, Wichita area women and some guys uh, who are inspirational, influential, substantial, 
um, and help other women uh, basically elevate each other uh, right. through kind of stories and education. So last time we had this in, um, and there's Mariah. Hi, she's gonna be one of the speakers uh, in a uh, couple months too. She's amazing. So she yes. spoke at the one, and you were there, mm -hmm. at, um, in Newton, and that was like that was a wonderful event. Like <laughs> I busted my ass helping get that one going, yes, you did. and Suzanne and everybody else was just amazing. To we all came together and everybody filled in all the gaps, and it was just incredible. Like the stories that came out of it, the empowerment that came out of it. So that was our like pilot project in, in Newton, uh, and, it, and it was really great. Uh, there was a few things right. that we wanted to change and we listened to everybody's feedback and we created this even more powerful, uh, intimate experience that's, that's going to be more dedicated for learning and, and being transformative. Right. Um, so we got our feet wet, we kind of figured out what the hell we're supposed to be doing and then now we're like full grown, like going for it. Right. Um, and the, the main keys, like I love these key principles. So women supporting women, women uh, sharing their wisdom women uh, creating uh, enriching environments, women uh, advocating for the female voice, which is huge because I can't tell you how, how many female patients that I have that don't feel like they have a voice. Right. And I think we've all been there, like even guys. Like none of this stuff is just for women, but even guys, there's just this kind of like stuff that holds us back, and same with women, of like feeling disempowered that we can't have a voice. And the favorite saying is, sorry not sorry right right so that big uh phenomenon with um women constantly apologizing for having thoughts and emotions and feelings right you know that crazy stuff yes apologies are all over the place yes <laughs> and then um men supporting the empowerment of women and that's where i come in Ta -da! Ta -da, me and scott i know we're the uh, main two guys probably for the uh, whole Wichita one this year for the 2019 series. Mm -hmm. So I'll have a little part. I'll do, I'm gonna talk about boundaries and nope zones and having one line and, and that is, it's, it's very simple stuff, but it's transformative. Like I even had a patient today that we went over that line thing and, uh, and, and boundaries and nope zone and, um, and she was just blown away. She was just like, oh my God, this is, so, cause her, you know, she's young, powerful, kind of like, uh, again, like most women these days, she's in charge of everything. She's mm -hmm. leading, but not a lot of women have other women that are leading as great examples. Right, right. Right. And so that's what we want to change about that culture too, because I have daughters and I want them to grow up in a power where, in a, in a place where women are really helping each other out, helping them up, elevating each other and uh, empowering each other versus just trying to kind of be men in leadership, right. which doesn't work very well. Yeah. And I think that this event is going to be so empowering because it's not going to be just a couple people standing in front of the room telling their story. It's going to be an integrative workshop where you are actually working on your stuff Yes. as we go through the day each, each, at each event. Yep. So. Yeah, and that focus is on the hero's journey. Right. Right. And we all have little hero journeys sometimes, and, and a lot of people got stuck somewhere along the way. Uh, so I want, we want to kind of talk about the hero's journey and talk about ourselves a little bit. And one of the best ways, just like Melanie 2.0 was saying, is that uh, a lot of times you go to these things, and it's basically I'm up here telling you that if you just do these 12 steps, you're going to be awesome. And if you just pray away really hard your <laughs> life's gonna be amazing amazing yeah if I put a car on my little dream board boom it's gonna happen. it's not real all right so what we want to talk about <laughs> is creating resiliency of self changing you to where your environment doesn't dictate who you are and how you react right right so Other doing people, the dirty work hell yeah doing the dirty work so the you're gonna get board. your hands dirty yeah, and I love the aspect of like how this is transitioned because last time we didn't do this, but this time we're really we're creating a workbook. We're working through actual steps and figuring out where people are, and then giving them tools that they can actually make changes with. Right. And you know that's the part that uh, like has gotten everybody really excited about this uh, because it's not just reading a book and and saying if I just do what they do I'll get better. It's like no, everybody's situation is a little bit different. 
where am I at in my journey? What do I need to overcome? How do I kind of, even the idea of expecting that things are going to get really bad and then mm-hmm. they'll get better. Right. Things will hurt and then they won't. And I think that's a big aspect that I would love to broach with people at this event is being afraid of that pain that comes um, from change because we're all deathly afraid of change. Most of us stay in the same patterns of behavior our entire lives. That's why I only carry dollars, never change. (laughs) It scares the hell out of me. That's right. (laughs) So it will be a place for people who actually are ready to take steps in their life and move their life forward in a more positive direction and actually attain your goals. That's what we're hoping to get out of it is we want to see you move forward. We want to help you move, move forward. And we want to be in that vulnerable place with you as yeah. your support system. This is not for first world problems. No. This is the real stuff, right? Yeah. So as we talk, I want to hear kind of, you know, as we go through the, the, the idea of the hero's journey and the divine and, and kind of fractured self, kind of, if you guys don't mind, kind of where are you guys at in those processes you know that's gonna be one of the key things and I really I gotta say before I went through my annihilation I really thought I had my shit together like I was really like a champion I like dude I like survived negative 30 degree snowstorms or or, uh, (laughs) on the side of a cliff on the side of a cliff negative 30 degrees right I survived two blizzards over 13,000 feet I've had guns in my face. I've been robbed at gunpoint. I had people that I got in fights with, pull guns in parking lots, and I just survived each time. And I really thought that was survival. That your was, body survived. That's right. But your body was here. But it wasn't. Right. It really wasn't. And you know, I even thought I, everything was good and happy and wonderful. And everybody that would look at my life back then was just like, oh, "Man, they got it all together." You know, he he's got it figured out. Right. No, no. I was good at making it look like that, like most people. I think most people are really good at making their lives look great. Highlight reels all over social media. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's one of the, as you guys probably know, but some of you guys probably have uh, known for a while, but like I posted, I, you know, I expect my patients to be very transparent. And it was always just like, if you just do what I do and suck it up, you know, you'll get better. But once I went through my annihilation, like I was broken before I got fixed right. and for a lot a while I was just broken I was going through the trials and, and the, and the uh, tests and I found out that when I was transparent about how I was that suddenly patients were totally more revealing about that is true who they were and, and friends and family like it made deeper stronger connections with people yes and I think once you take your mask off other people can take theirs off but usually what we demand is i'm gonna wear my mask really tight and I, I i want you to take off your mask and you to be vulnerable right and i'm gonna stay safe and i'm gonna stay aloof and i'm not going to share my dirtiness with you right right yeah. so that won't work at the wise women <laughs> events that won't work just so you know so no no, no <laughs> masks right no masks no and what a gift because all your relationships become so much more um, enriching, yeah. right? Your friendships now, your work relationships. I would, I would assume even your patient relationships have changed. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, your relationships with your children. Yeah. So yeah. I think that the annihilation part is terrifying. Yeah. And then once you get on the other side of it, you're like, oh, I mean, I was terrified of that. And it was pretty awful. But man, the glory is on the other side. Yeah. Absolutely. We sound like we're in a church or something. Hey, uh, get it, <laughs> hey, man, y'all. So, uh, I'm from Southern Baptist. Oh, oh, I am. Um, I was raised in a Methodist church. So. When you do the 12 steps, mm-hmm, you go through the hero's journey. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of church I used to go to. Dr. G will not be singing at the Wise Women events, <laughs> okay. unless we're really lucky. Dude, if I sing at church, Jesus like, dude, just shut it down. Like, just Can you just <laughs> mimic the words? You're kind of hurting other people's feelings. All right. Are we diving in? Yeah. Yeah, we should get in the deep part. So this is going to be a lot of uh, like shallow to deep end stuff. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, and, you know, one of the things 
that I, I want to kind of touch on is Tara's. So we were, I was having this trying little debate or not debate, but trying to figure stuff out. Like with the hero's journey, you know, uh, the hero's journey is like every like journey for every hero that that's ever been, every movie, every legend. It's all the same kind of like steps. And what you find is that that's the steps you have to make too. Like it's nothing right. unique about them. Um, but we were looking at the kind of fracture itself and I was talking to, to, to Tara about some of the inconsistencies with the hero's journey when it came to females. And one of the things was that the masculine versus feminine part. And so it talks a lot about the masculine part of feminine change. And so as a guy, I think, well, that's boy stuff. And oh, so when the girl becomes more like a boy, they're strong. And, but it wasn't that, right? right. It was feminine self and, and, and masculine self. So, like, it's gender. And you can jump in. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'll, don't let me over talk. Oh, no, no, All I'll right. jump in. Right. So, um, basically, you had, like, uh, you know, as a guy, like, I'm very feminine in a lot of ways. Especially the way that I do, like this. <laughs> I don't know if that's feminine. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's, but I'm very masculine in a lot of ways. A lot of ways, oh, get right? Deep voice. Yeah. So I can I can build a house. I can I can rebuild a car. I built rebuilt an engine. I climb mountains. You know I, I sleep in caves like a manly man. But I also like cried at Beauty and the Beast and and can nurture your girls and can nurture my daughters and mm -hmm. you know be very sensitive to their needs and you know I change diapers and cry and like. And I'm not sure why that is equated to being feminine, but in our no, society, no, no. Right. it is. Right. No, but that's the, that's a positive trait. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. The masculine and feminine, like I want, the only thing that I want to jump in real quick and make sure that we see clearly is not that we're talking about a gender of you being a male and a female. Um, we're not talking about that, a physical gender. We are talking about um, energies that are within each of us. We each have masculine and feminine energies within us. And we are taught culturally what it means to be a woman. We are taught culturally what it means to be a man. And so then we're left trying to bring together how we feel inside, how we live in this world, what our culture tells us is okay and trying to put it all together and become an authentic human being while dealing with really hard stuff in life. Yes, constantly. Constantly, yeah. yeah. The hard stuff never stops. You're never going to get it done. <laughs> and you know what's funny is even the feminine and the masculine stuff, uh, hey, Mariah, hey, Suzanne. Um, hey, wh while we're talking to, if you guys have had your own kind of annihilation, you don't have to go into details if you don't want to, but have you? Have you been through the same blood and the same mud as we go through this? You know, it's important that everybody knows that they're not alone with this. We all right. go through those struggles. Um, but what's interesting is like today we think of like masculine and feminine, e even like gender roles, uh, have been very recent. So what's interesting is like men or boys used to wear dresses. Mm -hmm. Do you know that? Mm -hmm. Right? So even like I think it's. President uh, Eisenhower, no, 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 uh, Teddy Roosevelt, tough guy. I don't remember these. I don't know how you do. You're Bo so amazing. Boys wear like dresses um, for the first part of their childhood, right? Right. Uh, pink and red was men was man colors. Passion is fiery. Blue was a woman's color, right? Which is kind of gentle, and nurturing. And men wore ruffles. Men wore. Flat, uh, curly wigs. Men wore makeup. Men wore, wore high heels. Right. And so just like in nature, I, I don't know if you guys know this, but almost uh, every super colorful animal is the girl, uh, sorry, is the so boy, we, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, the bland ones are the girls. Because every species wants to get with the girl, she doesn't have to do anything. Right. Right? It'd just be like, look, if girls only wore, like, sweats and sweatshirts, she would be like, damn, look how good she looks in that sweat. Mm -mm. Like, <laughs> right? And you're like, I'm going to go put on my ruffles and my, my, uh, my flowery little pants and my high heels. So attract that girl, right? Right. And so men used to have to work really hard, like every other species on Earth, to attract females. And then 
In World War II, it changed. Right. And after World War II, uh, Sears came out with the Pink Kitchen. And then all of a sudden, That's what did it, that pink, kitchen. pink became women and blue became men. Right? Pants right. became men. Men didn't wear pants. Boys don't wear uh, dresses, right? So it's weird that even our gender kind of like identities that we've had have not been around that long. And even right. there's a really good uh, uh, historical thing about like uh, video games when they first came out. They were equally purchased by boys and girls. Girls like to play video games just as much as boys. But about the 1980s, uh, they genderized the toy shelves. They made oh. girl shelves and boy shelves. Instead of just a general toy shelf. Right. Interesting. And then when video games started uh, tanking, uh, then they had to come out with a new release of these. And then they had to pick. They couldn't just be gender neutral. They had to pick male or female. And so they picked boys. And so then every commercial then was boys. But before mm -hmm. that, it was always family, girls, boys. This is There's interesting everybody. facts. And so then they genderized that completely different. And now when you go to the grocery store, and even now when you go to uh, Walmart, there's a big thing about having general, gender neutral toys, like normal. Uh, but now they have like girls toys and all toys. <laughs> so now it's just like, yeah. okay, so boys aren't going to play with dolls and stuff. But That's not true. My boys do. I played with Barbies a long time with my, with my sisters, uh, but they all had, uh, basically it was just a lot of shooting and violence and car crashes. So... <laughs> <laughs> my like, Barbies got crashed into by cars for my brother. Love the drama. <laughs> so, uh, as we talk about that feminine self and, and, and uh, a mask, and then that's, that's for both. Right. right. And, and I want to encourage you to, instead of broaching these subjects with a preconceived judgment that you've already thought of in your head, approach them with curiosity. Mm. Um, maybe taking things that you already subscribe to as fact in your, in your own mind and... Um, challenge those and say is that really true what part of this can I take as truth what part of this can I take as uh, not true and really just have an open mind to this discussion instead of preconceived notions yeah hey Donna so she so so Tara Scott had come up with this so wounded masculine so for men and women the wounded masculine for them is controller. So that's the abuser, that's the, for, so for men, they're abusive, but for women, they're the same thing, they're abusive. That's that angry, bitter, destructive part of us that wants to lash out, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, she said well, Mariah said well said male. Oh, good. Okay. Basically, I feel like that's a slight on me. She's just like, yeah, she knows what she's talking about. I mean, you don't even know what that's about. But. I know. So hopefully we'll have Mariah on here uh, next time, too. Um, and Mariah was an awesome speaker at the, the last one. So she was. She stepped up the game. She raised the bar. Made people cry. That's where it's at. I know. <laughs> they were laughing. They were Once crying. Once you get people crying, it's all good after that. I know. So then Wounded Masculine is, is, is a controller. And then Divine Masculine for male or female is... Uh, protector right. Right? right strong woman protects her family without hurting others strong man protects his family without hurting others same thing even right. protecting yourself right right so you don't lash out at others but you're protective of yourself and then wounded feminine for men and women is victim and then uh, divine feminine is creator and so you know that's the uh, the, the goal then, uh, a lot of people are that kind of controller victim. They hurt me. Nobody's going to hurt me. I'm going to hurt them first. Mm -hmm. To that point of where you're just kind of self-protective, self-nurturing. And then you're, you're creating, you're, you're uh, uh, expanding. Right? right, right. So our goals here would be to help people who are in the wounded masculine, wounded feminine, um, I don't know if place is the right word, but when you're in that role state, state thank yeah. you, moving into the divine masculine and the divine feminine, and then merging them together and becoming a whole integrated human again. Yeah. Um, and that allows you to live as your most authentic self. Yeah. Yeah, and it's amazing. Like, 
you know, it never gets finished, but no, the never, man never I done. am today, I wish I would have known about this so long ago. I wish I could have been this father from the start or this kind of guy in a relationship since the very beginning, you know? Right, but you were you couldn't because you were too afraid of annihilation. You yeah. were stuck in the hero's journey. What yeah. number was that where you were stuck? No. You have it on your list. Uh, step one. <laughs> 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 so we will be using this hero's journey as a kind of a guidepost when we go through um, the wise women events and helping people move through the stages of it because you'll be able to see when you dive into the workbook what stage you're at and you'll relate to it and then we will hopefully be able to give you specific tools for you yeah. Um, to move you to the next step and get you moving in a more positive direction. Yeah, Mariah says we, we will have to take off our armor uh, that has been shielding us from our authentic self. Oh, that's beautiful. That's absolutely true. It is true. And I used to be, you know, I don't know. It was weird because I was a rescuer, but I had very, like, I've been hurt so many times um, because I wasn't the person I needed to be, I think. And I kept, again, you know, I keep trying to hug porcupines. Oh, oh no, what a sad porcupine. Ow, oh, why so are you hurting cute, me? They're so cute, but ow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's the rescuer, right? They keep hugging porcupines. Right. And, um, and expecting the porcupine to not poke them. Right. Like, like, you're asking them to live outside their nature. Right. Yeah. No. All, all, if you, you, first thing you ever have to do in life is accept people at their current state of pathology. You're not going to change them. You just have to accept. That's why they keep making those same decisions. You're not going to be the person that changes them. They have to. They have to find the inner change themselves. You know. Right. You have to change. Stop hugging them. Yes. <laughs> so the very first step. It's a twelve-step journey. So the first step is to admit step that you're. Twelve-step program. Got that. Twelve-step program. You have Here to admit you're an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> so my name is Patrick, and I'm alcohol. My name is Melanie, and I eat dark chocolate every single day, and I'm not sad about it. Oh, this ain't the 12 steps. This is 12 oh, stages. Uh, all right, 12 fine, stages. Fine, all right. Fine. So the first one, you know, basically you have the ordinary world. You have the status quo. You basic, And people love status quo because, again, you talked about this in the very beginning uh, a long time ago when we first started talking about all the wise women stuff, was some people are very comfortable being in abusive relationships because they can predict that. Because it's all they know. Right. It's and, their normal. And, you know, it's just like, no, he treats me really good when, I'm, when I uh, don't mess up. He only hits me when I'm bad. So at least you know you're going to get beaten. You know you're going to get happy. There's a predictability there. Right. And actually, women like and men, and men, uh, going into another relationship that's not abusive is scary as hell. Yeah. You have so much trauma response that it's almost stagnating are, are comfortable to be stagnant in the status quo of right. a terrible relationship because well what what if they be what if I fall in love and I, I put down my shield and I take off my armor and then they hurt me right. at least I know he hits me or I know that she belittles me or I know also similar to you thinking that you had survived so many things because they were physical things you survived we can put our body through a lot of physical torment so being yeah. beat is there's so much psychology to it but also we're like we can handle the physical i know the psychology of this person i am scared of a new psychology of a new person right even if it's kind and gentle and loving it's so abstract from what they know they would much rather deal and survive the physical abuse yeah yeah you know one of the common things that like when i'm dating is girls will say like i've never met a guy like you and it's just like, I don't want to fight. I don't want to hurt you. I just, let's talk about things. And there's nothing we can't reason Wait, out. real question. Yeah. So if I'm mad at you, do you get mad at me back? Or no? No. Right? Don't get mad back at people when they're yeah. mad at you. That's a poor response. Right. And I'll kind of always <laughs> ask where the heart is, too. So, uh, you know, if that person's being mean to you, it's just like, wait, do they love me? Yeah, they love me. Are they trying to be hurtful? No, they're not trying to be hurtful. Maybe if they, they are, are, you don't need to be in a relationship with them. But if they're a good person, good people hurt other people by accident. Yes. And it's okay to say, hey, I'm getting hurt here, but that's not their intention. 
Right. You know, and so a lot of times I had to deal with that. It was like, well, I joke a lot. And sometimes people take offense and be like, well, no, 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 my heart, I love you. I don't want to hurt you. I was just making a joke and you just need to tell me if it hurts you. Good so then I know. Setting. Yeah. And then they're just like, what the hell are you doing? Well, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, it's just... Right. So the status quo is a very safe place in your journey. That's why most people don't go on their hero's journey. Right. Uh, and then there's always a call to action. There's right. that, that thing of just like, I got to get the hell out of here. But then you basically don't. Uh, there's all these steps to change in the, there's pre-contemplation, which is, man, I don't like this. There's contemplation, which I should do something. <laughs> and then there's uh, planning, which is like, oh, here's my escape. I'm going to do this. I'll open my own bank accounts. I'll figure it out. I'll get another home. And, you know, this is how I'm going to get out of the relationship. And then that's where people stop. They'll join the club, they'll buy the exercise equipment, but no one uses it. They don't work out. It's because so the pain has of change has to be less than the pain of the current situation for change to happen. So if it doesn't suck badly enough, then it's hard to overcome that impairment or that, that, that fear of what if I fail? What if it right. doesn't work out? What if it's me? I'm what really if I'm comfortable wrong? right here. This is fine. Yeah. So there's a uh, Skinner's box. And uh, some of you guys probably know this one. Um, Skinner's box uh, is a famous uh, 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 scientist, Dr. Skinner. And uh, he uh, did this room. And uh, he basically divided the room in two. And he put electrodes in the floors. Mm -hmm. And electrode uh, on this side of the room was for A. Electrodes on this word for switch B, right? Mm -hmm. And then you put a dog in there. And if you turn on A and the dog was becoming shocked, the dog would go to floor B, where he wasn't being shocked. And so, of course, when we believe happiness is a choice, we tend to choose happiness. Mm -hmm. If he shuts off floor A and turns on floor B, and now the dog's, dog's being shocked over here, the dog goes over to the other side where he's not shocked because, again, Mm -hmm. When we believe happiness is a choice, we tend to choose happiness. Tend, not always. Right. But then he did this really interesting thing, and he turned on both switches. And now no matter where the dog goes, it's in constant, utter pain. And the most amazing thing happens. It becomes normal. And the dog's not bothered by being shocked all the time. Because it's just what he's used to. Yep. And so the abnormal becomes the normal. The kind of stuff, like, I grew up pretty hardcore in the ghetto and, and lots of gangbangers and stuff. And I did a good job of not letting people ever know that, you know, because that was my vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And so, um, the stuff that we talked about, like, people almost shooting other people and doing drive-bys and hiding guns and all kinds of crazy stuff. That was just normal. Mm -hmm. But if you ever talk to anybody outside that neighborhood about that stuff... That is not normal. They were like, what the hell are you talking? Right? Right. So uh, even Jessie Griffith, I, I talked to her. We had martinis once, and I was telling her all these stories, and she was just like, you're making all this up. It can't be true. <laughs> because it's just like, hmm, yeah. So Mariah says, uh, operant, not operational. Oh, operant, now what did she say, defiance? No. You have to go back up. Can you? All right. Oh, operant, operant. Conditioning. conditioning. Operant conditioning. That's, that's, that's the Skinner box. That's the getting used to the constant pain. So that becomes another part of uh, why we don't make changes too on our hero's journey is that uh, without annihilation, without that pain of the current situation being greater than pain of change, we just kind of become numb to it. Right. And there's this great, uh, and I don't know who this is, but Mariah might know or, or Scott knows. Uh, Scott's the one that told me, but um, it was this story about two fish, two young fish swimming in the water, and they pass another big fish. And the big fish says, hey boys, how's the water, right? And then the two fish kind of swim along, and then eventually they look at each other and goes, what the hell is water? <laughs> right? Right. They're surrounded by it. They have no it's idea. It's their whole entire life and being, mm -hmm. but because it's so constant, it's the Skinner's box. It just right. becomes normal. Right. And so um, that's kind of where we're at a lot of times. It's just our normal. 
Right. Who, who doesn't imagine a life where people don't beat people? Like, one of my things, my dad, uh, my first dad and second dad, uh, they were both abusive. And uh, so my dad, uh, my second dad hated women. He was tortured by his, his sisters when he was little, so he just has this hatred for women. And so he would beat my sisters and, and, and beat me and beat my mom, and even in front of me. And, you know, like that just becomes the normal. You know, you couldn't tell that to other classmates. <laughs> what are you talking about? Your dad beat your mom in the car in front of you. Like, that's crazy. Right. But because it happens all the time, that's just normal. And so, and then my other, my, my first dad, uh, birth dad, yeah, uh, he cheated all the time. I had like eight marriages and probably 20 mistresses or something. So my whole life I knew don't cheat, don't beat, right? That was my two things. Like if I do two things good in this world, I'm not gonna beat anyone except for guys that talk shit. Cause I'm a, I'm a lover, not a fighter, but I'm also a fighter. <laughs> You're a protector. Oh, protector, there protector. you go. So, uh, so I would say stuff like that, but if I said I'm not a cheater or beater to someone that has no clue about that kind of life, right? they're like, what the hell are you saying? Like, I've had people laugh at me and go, what are you talking about? That's like the bare minimum. Right, like, that's, that's the bare that's minimum. That's not an achievement. <laughs> that's the bare minimum. But from my world, that's a hell of a good achievement. Right. Yeah. But also, that brings up another point that, so those of us who grew up with patterns of behavior, when we had role models who showed us things that weren't what we wanted to emulate, um, we did one of two things. We either grew up and became them, or we grew up in loads of them, but then we went to the other end of the spectrum, and a lot of times um, we became very submissive, uh, we don't have good boundaries because we were fed false information about what unconditional love and loyalty looks like yeah and we became people who continued to hug porcupines because we needed to show that we loved them yeah and it's all so this is the patterns of behavior that we want to approach and um, help you to start thinking about them and responding differently maybe in your life instead of reacting yeah and you know, women, like my mom always kept marrying men who were abusive, men who were cheaters. Right. But that her was her comfort. Because her patterns of behavior right. had not changed. And I think, and I heard one time that people keep repeating the same cycle because they want the ending to be different. That rom-com <laughs> ending of just like, man, if I love this guy right, if I just, if I just do things differently, it's going to be better this time. They want that happy if ending. If I love enough they will love me back. Yeah. I'll just show them. I'll keep showing you rescue, them. Rescue. Rescue. Right. And then it never happened. It, it's no, always it's the same. No, it's never going to happen because yeah. the pattern has been set. Yeah. So what, what my, my uh, psychology teacher back in my first year of college said, if you want to make a change, you got to make a change. If you don't make a change, you're going to be exactly where you already are, where you said you didn't want to be. And I love that. And I and don't so, know how you say it so fast every time. When you're so fast, you're... You do it so fast. One bright day in the middle of the night, two dead boys got to fight back, back, face each other, drew those roars, shot each other to death. Death policeman heard the noise, came and killed those dead. God dang. Okay, wait. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. One bright day in the middle of the night, two dead boys got to fight back, back, face each other, drew their swords, shot each other. Death policeman heard the noise, came and killed those dead boys. If you don't believe the slide is true, ask blind man. He saw it too. Oh my God. It's like Peter Piper. Yeah. I can't. Tongue That's twisters. Good. So, yeah, that's. Uh, I love that. So, you got to make a change. If you don't make a change, you're going to be exactly where you are, where you said you didn't want to be. Right. And so that's, uh, if your life isn't working right, if your relationships aren't working right, then the only person you can change is you. you. But you can't change yourself until you become very aware of who you are. And yeah. you have to call yourself out on your own bullshit. Mm-hmm. I said bullshit on there. Is that allowed? Oh, you can't say bullshit because you yes. get in trouble. Yes. <laughs> so... The call to action, right? That, that kind of impetus of change, of just like, I gotta do something. So right. for some people, that's changing physically who they are. For some people, it's changing their emotions or their, their, their uh, spirituality, right? right? It's changing relationships. It's, it's uh, breaking off old habits and, and starting new ones. But that call to action is constantly answered by, uh, I'm not gonna do it, <laughs> like, I can't do it. 
So there is a constant refusal for the call. Constant. Yes. And that's why it's not easy. That's why I'm not going to leave because my life is really comfortable. Yes. Yeah. And you think about like marriages and stuff that are bad. It's just like, well, we'll be here for the kids. Oh, it's it's just better. It's more secure, financially secure. It's scary being out on your own. It's what if you marry the same person? What mm-hmm. if the divorce is really hard? What if you screw up the What kids? if it's really hard to raise kids by myself? Yeah. yeah. Which it is. Psh. <laughs> All you got to do is just love them. No. And love them and spank them and give them McDonald's. Don't you have like 12 kids? 17. You're like a Mormon plus? Are you in like Mormon level 5 now? I mean, and the way it keeps happening, I mean... There could be another one showing up you on my know, house any day now. You know how it works, right? <laughs> we did that episode of sex, and I drew those pictures. The last child I received was not achieved by that. Thank you. <laughs> you just find them, kids? <laughs> they just find me. I mean, just have, like, feelers out there. Come find me, children. So, when we do change, there's what's called the meet, the meeting of the mentor. Yes, the meeting yeah. of the mentor. Meeting, meeting of the mentor. So in Star Wars, think of Yoda. Uh, it's always that person that has that sage advice. They say that just thing that you're just like, all right, all right, I think I can do Like it this. just Snaps. pings with you. And maybe you've heard the same thing said 50 times, but this person said it in a way that you could hear it. Right. Oh, exactly. Yeah. So that's where, uh, if you guys know Scott Spradlin, like he... He was the one, like I was just uh, kind of broken and lost in my situation. And then he said these really interesting things that I thought were just horrible things to say to someone. Like, lean into the pain and it'll hurt until it stops. And it's just like, what the hell are you talking about? Why are you trying to make me have more pain? You're supposed to say, it's all going to be better. You're supposed to give me some like simple answer. But like the idea that like, yeah, you can't. If you go in the ocean, the waves are coming towards you, you can try to push those waves down as much as you want, but you are still gonna be pushed back by those waves. And the minute that you go with the waves and lean into it, right. that's the only way that you survive and make progress. Right. Yeah. In one of these things... <laughs> She's like, Scott, somebody's talking about you. Oh, uh, because Scott's great. I lost what I was gonna say, so go on. Totally so dementia is a very... T- <laughs> <laughs> my bad so with you I kept asking you like like what was you, when you were feeling annihilated like who was your mentor who's the, who's the one that said that thing <clears throat> oh that's and what I was um, about. and you were like it, it was your inner voice right so a lot Which, of people, I don't know you, so <laughs> like you're just like oh, I was my own mentor <laughs> like <laughs> so I never say that it was myself I always say that it was my God voice that's what I call your okay. inner voice your intuition yeah and um, I didn't really have a choice in the annihilation I didn't I didn't leave I was left yeah and I didn't have a choice I was in the fire so I stayed in the fire and I was miserable and it was terrible and I couldn't figure out how to get out of it until one day I just woke up and I was sick of all of my own BS and hearing all my own excuses and being a victim and I wanted to feel different. And so that day was a different day for me and it set the course for, for my growth and change and um, where I do feel like an integrated whole person again. Yeah. Is that where your pain of the current situation was greater than the pain of change? Yeah, and, and I got real pissed off. Yeah. Like, that, like I always tell people this. When, when I'm counseling somebody and they're really in the thick of it, and, A, nobody wants to feel the pain, and I'm like, no, you need to feel it, yeah. and you need to not push it away and just sit with it and not be mad at it. Like, when you're sad, say you're sad. Like, I told when my kids would come and be like, Mom, why are you crying? Because I am sad. Like, I didn't send him out of the room and tell him don't look at me or snap at them or be mean to them. I was like, I don't know what else to say. I'm just, I am beyond sad and I'm crying. Yeah. And it gave them permission to do that too. Which, you know, when a family is breaking apart and everything is becoming different, it's change for everybody. I wasn't the only one going through it. I mean, they all were. So. Yeah, that's, I cried for like six months, but that's during my breaking part. But I'd like, like, I wonder, 
at a certain point, like asking my girls what it was like having dad cry. Like, oh, I'm this big, strong guy that built me. the house and I fixed the car. And they haven't dad told is, you yet? No. So, my kids um, have each individually told me, and probably the younger ones have expressed more verbally to me than anybody else, but they they have told me how sad it was for them to see their mommy cry every day. We're and, both getting, like, wet eyes here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're all both going to Thankfully, start, we're all on the other we're side We're going to start fun. crying. But, yeah, they did, they have, and we continue to heal. We're not healed. I don't know if we ever fully heal, right? I used to, right. It's I used not to achievement. Think, it's not a destination. Right. I used process. to think when I would be asked about something terrible that had happened to me when I was younger, I'd be like, "Oh, I'm healed. I don't like. I don't even think <laughs> about that anymore." Right? Yeah. But the truth is, you're never healed completely. Like you never get it done. I'm still find parts of me that heal every single day. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel a little bit better about that one little tiny thing that happened 12 years ago that I just remembered happened. And now I'm like putting a bandage on it for me. Yeah. So that's been very interesting for me to experience that I still heal every single day. Even when I feel like I'm healed and whole, there's still parts that are healing. And I just didn't know that they were needing to be healed until they come up. So yeah. you have to be patient with yourself. That's what I was thinking. Thank you, Mariah. I think that uh, that's probably why I became a rescuer. Is like I remember probably my first traumatic thing was watching like we were driving and I was in the back seat, and uh, I, my mom had bought groceries, normal stuff, and my stepdad I was looking at how much she spent, and he just started hitting her while she was driving, mm -hmm. and I remember being in the back seat like I couldn't help, I couldn't do anything. I felt so like. Um, week and so I, I I and I still do this to the my to the day I, I take my soft stuff and I'll rub it that was my like security place. yeah I'd suck yeah. my thumb till I was like 13 and I, I rub my shirt even today uh, I notice I'll do that but that was Isn't that, that interesting that that stayed with you I know it's a comfort measure right yeah but there is that kind of feeling that I couldn't I couldn't change I couldn't help I was too small I was too little and you know, I think that's why I became that person. Like, I wasn't my own identity. Mm -hmm. I wasn't looking for a whole relationship. I was looking to fix the brokenness that I kept seeing around me. Right. You know? Do you still have that? Do you still feel like that? Or do you feel Oh, I used to. From it? Mm -mm, not anymore. Battery and risking and shit. Because that's not my... That's not my... Whole uh, bag of notes. Nope. Mm -mm. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. Got my little box. <laughs> Nope, 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 around it. Right. Because that's even like after I got divorced, my first few relationships, I noticed that I was kind of like, you know, I, I'd find people that were having problems. And there's this one girl that, I mean, she just was like a box of red flags. And I was just, I ain't saying who it was. She's red flag, red flag, red flag. She's nice, but it, she was red flags. And uh, if you think it's you, it's not you, it's the other one, right? <laughs> but I, we called her, her nickname it's was you. Red Flag Girl. And because I was just really like, what like but i was just like okay i don't think i should get too involved because i'm the rescuer i gotta stop rescuing because that's not who i need to be what a great gift you had that awareness to know Jeez. okay i am a rescuer i am trying to rescue this chick and i need to run i need yes. to go against my nature i should have just ran i need but, to run but you know, <laughs> i was just like observing so I, again i was kind of doing Good. that little pace you know through my little journey but then uh, there was a girl I really liked, and I said, you know what? Uh, you want different things than I want, and we can both be wonderful people and not be in the same path at the same time. Right. And that was that first time of like, wait, I can just walk away, and I don't have to fix anyone, and I can just worry about, you know, me being whole and wholesome and not having to rescue. Right. And I thought, well, that's just freaking amazing. Like, that was that first you moment. You felt so great, right? Yeah. Yeah. That I thought... This is a whole different way of living, you know? You're in charge now. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, my feelings or my emotions aren't dependent upon rescuing that person. The same thing's true with uh, my childhood of, uh, like, all the women that, that I watched kind of get hurt was that wasn't my job to fix them. It's not no. my mission to fix them. No. It was just unfortunate, you know? 
And I, I know we want to come back to that, but I want to stay with that thought of that present moment that you have the awareness now to respond instead of react. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's different. It's a whole different world. And also, once yeah. you learn your boundaries and then you meet people who are boxes of red flags <laughs> and they're kind of needy and clingy, yeah. it becomes such a turnoff that you don't even want to have anything to do with fixing them. You want to be like, oh, you need way more work than I have the energy for. <laughs> yeah. I love you and good luck. Yeah. And you send them on peacefully. Yeah. Yes. That's right. That's right. So that way you don't keep repeating the same cycles. Because that's, that's called insanity. <laughs> it, is. it is. So refusing that call, and we're almost done. Like, this is crazy. The hour went by so fast. I want to hear about your guys. Like, we haven't been asking questions. Holly always asks questions. Oh. I'm not saying that you're questions? not as good as Holly. I mean, I'm 2.0. But um, that's one thing. Holly's always, like, asking questions. So I want to ask you guys a question that, uh, you know, what was like who was your mentor what oh, was the yeah. thing who was your Yoda who, who was the one that person that said the thing that that maybe allowed you what to what was the one changes? one word or one sentence that pinged you that, yeah. that projected you forward yeah. I always like to hear those yeah because again empowerment mm -hmm. that's the thing that connects us all we all are on the same journeys just at different places and just because you haven't started your journey and someone else finished doesn't make you any different they all go through. We just start repeating, or not repeating, but going through the same paths, just better and better and more equipped, you right. know? Right, the hard stuff never stops. Like yeah. that's That was a misconception I had, like, oh my God, when I get on the other side of this, it better be easy breezy mac and cheesy because I cannot deal with any more crazy. Right. And guess what? That is not how it happened. Yeah. It is still life there is still hardship there is still really hard things to deal with and live through and you just feel more equipped on the right. other side like you can handle it even though they're really hard still on the other side yeah <laughs> yeah and one of the i'll tell you because we we'll go through on the okay so next week uh tuesday i believe is christmas eve Christmas Day. Chris, uh, is that right? That it doesn't sound accurate. I'm almost 100% certain. She's a mom. Certain. She should know this. It's Tuesday is Christmas. No. Boom. Are you sure? No. Christmas Day. Patrick's wrong once again. Tuesday. <laughs> but I'm not too proud Go to be Christmas wrong. Go finish Christmas shopping, guys. Run. Okay, so Tuesday we probably won't have a show on Christmas. I feel like, I mean, let's do spiked eggnog shows. That's right. We should do it. We still got to do it. Terrible. The cooking show. Okay. So, Are we gonna do the Thursday. Oh, Thursday? Thursday we should do our show, yeah? Okay. That'll be like Thursday. the 20... 27th. 7th. It's the day before my birthday. What? what? It's the day after my... You're, you're Wait, the you're the 26th? 26th. <gasps> We're first, Christmas babies? First Jesus, then Patrick, then Melanie Samo. The 28th. Please come out and celebrate with me, people. Yeah, I did see that. Usually people are all like, you didn't come to the party. I was like, I wouldn't invite it. They're like, I invited you on Facebook. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. All right. So uh, on the 27th, what we'll do is we'll continue our hero's journey. Yeah. And uh, maybe if we can get Mariah over here. Um, Mariah, do you need a formal invite? That would be awesome. So uh, she... Like it's so empowering when you see powerful people, inspirational people, influential people that have been to the same mud and the same blood as you, right? So I want to leave you guys with this quote, <clears throat> and it's not my actual quote. Uh, I made it up. Take a corn lost weight and has scoliosis. It does have scoliosis. Somebody pointed that out earlier. Oh, I didn't get to say it, but. There was a, 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 a line I used to say all the time at seminars that I ripped off from uh, The Simpsons when they went to the Mr. Pip factory. I don't know it. Gosh, man, that was a great one, but I just adapted. So this is adapted from 
the like lieutenant sergeant and the edge of tomorrow but your hero's journey is the great redeemer it's fiery crucible in which heroes are formed the uh i can't read my own writing oh my gosh <laughs> the one place where all have the same fate fate regardless of circumstance gender or stature say it again all right <laughs> there's a long pause your hero's journey is the great redeemer it's the fire crucible in which heroes are formed <laughs> the one place where all share the same fate regardless of circumstance gender or stature that's a good one how come nobody applauded that was great i said i quit <laughs> <laughs> so, with that, with that being that, that means it's not a man's journey. It's not a woman's journey. We are all in this journey. It doesn't matter whether you're rich, you're poor. It doesn't matter whether you have all five fingers on one hand or webbed toes on the other. Right. That doesn't make any sense. Um, webbed toes. We all go through this. The people that you think have their shit together... Do not have their shit together. <laughs> I mean, I definitely do. I do too, but <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> so, we are all in this journey. So that's why I'm really big about the Wise Women event, right? Yes. It's because I love the idea of empowering other people to elevate through transparency and vulnerability. Yes, the vulnerability. I go to lectures all the time where it's I talk and I'm the authoritarian and I got my stuff together and I know everything and you people are just lucky to be here to learn and absorb so from it. <laughs> but what I do in practice is I say, I'm broken, you're broken, let's figure out a better way. Right. That's it. Um, I also want to talk about that just for a second because <sighs> it's, I am so, so, so excited for this wise women. Um, a, it's going to be at OptiLife. Did we yes. say that? It's going to be, OptiLife is one of our sponsors along with, uh, I think, Yaya's and, um, um, what are the other ones? Larkspur, Larkspur and Spur. a bunch of other places. So, um, Patrick and I have been discussing cool stuff like this for a long time and this is something we're both very passionate about. We both have the desire to be of service in our communities and to create and help healthier individuals rise up and walk in their footsteps in their communities. So being a part of this is super, super exciting for all of us because it allows yes. us to share with you. Um, I, I get messages every single day from people asking me uh, for guidance to help because I was very open with my story, which is how we um, really connected, even though I started following you way before that because mm -hmm. you're so cool. Um, and so we were smart. both stalking so each other smart. on Facebook. Yes. That's funny. But in being so open about what I was going through, you were able to see yourself in me. And um, mm. I know that you told me that there were times where my words helped you. I know you've been told by others that your words have helped others. And so we are just lighting the path for people to do that for themselves in their own lives. Yeah. So we both feel very, very passionate about it. Yeah. Yeah, and we both came through through the same place of, of basically becoming stronger through vulnerability. Yeah. Of acknowledging like, like weakness. Like just saying, and, listen, I, I am so broken right now that I can't even get off my floor. Yeah. Like all I can do right now is breathe, and I'm so sorry I can't do anything for you because I'm in this place where all I can do is breathe. And that complete vulnerability of not trying to say I'm fine I was not fine allowed other people to be like oh my gosh I am also not fine Yeah. how do we get out of this not fine place and it, it just created a community my group of friends and associates now is such a different group than it was before some of my old came with me obviously because some of them are lifers right you know you have some in your circle who will be with you forever yeah but it also cultivated a brand new circle of life around me of friends and um just really is a different life now than before yeah yeah 
No, I'm telling you, like reading your stuff, you're so vulnerable, you're going through so much. And I was just like, what if I told people I was crying uncontrollably in the parking lot? Like, what I mean, if I I'm pretty sure that? I actually posted that when my sister died, that there was a picture of me in my car bawling. And I was like, this is what life looks like right now. Yeah. And it is really hard. Yeah. And nah, now I'm going to cry. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> It's all right. It's okay to cry. So. It is okay to cry. I was going to say, And if you come to our event, which you should, mm -hmm. um, you will for sure cry too. Probably cry. We should give the website so they can buy tickets. Oh. Wise Women ICT. Wise Women ICT. Mm -hmm. When I go to Texas, anytime on the table, ICT there too. Sweet tea. <laughs> I knew you were going there. It's not. Nice. <laughs> so Wise Women ICT. Dot com uh, has all the event stuff. There's healthier, happier, stronger, secure, um, and there's lots of workshop involved. Like it's not just a sit and listen, uh, but it's cultivation. So right, you're all going right. to uh, go get your gym membership. Be sure and invest in your true health. Yes, that's right. Then you can rock a dad bod, and you don't have to go to a gym because you're comfortable with yourself, and you just gotta find somebody who likes a dad bod. <laughs> or not and then be happy with your cats <laughs> <laughs> we love you all thank you all right love you guys thank you guys for joining us post questions comments concerns all that kind of stuff um and thank you guys for posting stuff too i appreciate it. i'd love to hear your journeys your triumph as much as you guys would like to reveal i know it's not always easy um but it empowers other people yeah and, and do share your your Words, mentors. your mentors, yeah. your moments that propelled you forward. Yeah, so that first part, so we got through that f the first of the third journey, right? Mm -hmm. So the first part is, what's your status quo? What was the thing that made you either not change or change? And what, or your who was your mentor? Action, your refusal. Yeah. Who was your call to action? Yes. So that's what we want to we talk about. So, oh, and there's Carol Farrow. <laughs> so sweet. All right. Sweet. Uh, speaking of lights, the lighting tonight. What lighting tonight? Yeah, exactly. What lighting tonight? You had one job. Tree. Lighting? Where's our light? <gasps> oh yes. One job. We have different lighting today because. Meaning don't we don't look as glowy. I said glow, right? I still am kind of glowy over here. I glow so much I might be pregnant. It's hard to see mine because the comments are on my face. So I have to like go above it. I think with the glow and the little dad bod, I think I might be pregnant. That might be the glow. So we'll I probably know. need to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't learn a lot on the sex talk, but I did touch Clearly. a tree during the rain and I think I might be pregnant. <laughs> I cannot. All right. I have nothing to say. Bye, you guys. Bye. See you next Thursday. Next Thursday. Yeah.